Hello, hello, you beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. We talk all things life, love, spirituality, law of attraction, and all of that juicy goodness. I am here for a morning read, some morning messages. We're going to pull some pages from some of my favorite inspirational books. Happy Wednesday. I cannot believe we're moving through May so fast. Uh, we have a I believe we have um, an eclipse or full moon coming up around the 15th or 16th. Um, so we're going to pull some cards for those energies as well. I've already opened sacred space. I'm feeling guided to use my Course in Miracles deck. Has some lovely messages about how to navigate through life, trusting, surrendering, believing, choosing love, all that good stuff. It says, let me remember what my purpose is. Child of God, you were created to create the good, the beautiful, and the holy. Do not forget this. So perfect. We were here to learn that we can create our reality. We have to co-create it, though. We have to ask the universe to assist us on this journey and say, universe, I would like this, that, and this, blah, blah, blah. If it's for my highest good, please bring it to me. And then you see if it arrives. All right. I don't know why I just put the card back in the deck, but that'd be really funny if we got it again. <laughs> okay. The Holy Spirit speaks through me today. I love this one. The Holy Spirit's voice is as loud as your willingness to listen. So I always see this as like channeling. So what I'm doing right now in this reading is I am channeling messages to all of you. And we all have that gift. And if you're speaking to other people, if you're speaking to coworkers, friends, family, and they're saying something that you're like, I feel like this is the universe talking to me. <laughs> like I was just thinking about that on my car ride. And now somebody's in front of me saying it. That's the Holy Spirit, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, speaking through those people to send you a message. And sometimes it's speaking through us and it's telling us what we need to do and telling us how to feel and um, it's nurturing us, but we just have to get quiet enough to listen. Two awesome cards. I don't know why I put the other one back in. Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah. Excuse my language. I just literally cut the deck and opened up to it. <laughs> oh, it's a magical morning. I saw one of my favorite graduates at Starbucks this morning and we were like so busy, so excited. Like I got to the window and she was there. Like, I'm just saying how magical my morning was. Um, I pulled up to the window and I looked at her. I was like, I know you. And she just was like, oh my God, Miss Thornton. And we were just giggling so much and, and smiling. And I went to go give her my money. And she's like, it's already paid for. I was like, what? She goes, the person in front of you paid for you. And I was like, this is going to be a magical day. And all day yesterday, I intentionally worked on my vibration. I went for a really long walk outside. I took time. I stretched my body. I rested. I did some cleansing. I did a whole bunch of celery juice. I had two Reiki um, sessions and I just really worked on intentionally using my mind to manifest all good things. And today I got my coffee paid for and I got a text while I was in the coffee line that my program sold another like ton, like a ton of um, sites bought my program, like over 40. So that's a huge chunk of money that's coming in. So I manifested money today. I manifested my coffee and I man manifested um, more earnings and my ability to reach more kids with my lessons. So I'm hoping you guys are feeling the magic today. And I actually woke up not feeling so great. Um, but I know a couple of my friends jumped into my phone and they're like, my ego is out. How are you? Are you grouchy today? Are you feeling like, you know, you, you're not feeling good today? Sorry. I feel like I can't talk. Um, but yeah, so today can be magical if you make it magical. So intentionally shift your thoughts to no, I'm not going to let this energy make me feel a certain type of way. I'm just going to go with the flow and I'm going to expect good things. And I'm going to know that the universe is going to speak through me and move me. All right, let's get some more messages. They keep jumping to the left. I feel like that means something. I know left side is feminine side. Wow. I've never gotten this card before. Savoring pleasure. I fully embrace bliss in my life. And it's got a bubble bath with a rose and wine and candles. 
So nurture yourself, savor any kind of pleasure that is happening in your life. If you're feeling irritable, if you're feeling um, like just on edge, it's because you're not getting any pleasure. You're not pleasuring yourself, whether it's sexually, whether it's emotionally, physically, um, you know, go to those sources, go to those people that make you feel good and really start to notice, like, you know, if you are feeling that way, like, what are you, what are you keeping from you that could be enhancing your life? Like why even let yourself get to this depleted place? So why not choose the bliss every single day? Like, choose a a beautiful car ride, choose to go watch the sunrise, choose to go for a workout, um, choose to kiss your partner, choose to do whatever brings you pleasure. It's right in front of you. You just have to make the actual effort to do it. And a lot of times there's this, this voice in our head that either says we're not worthy of it or we're being selfish or no, we can't do this because we have to go do this. No, you prioritize yourself because you don't want to get to this point of feeling depleted. We have to keep your energies high. Okay. So we have savoring pleasure. Let me remember what my purpose is. And the Holy spirit speaks through me today. Let's do some animals. Yeah. Side note, after I keep finishing a sentence, I feel like I don't remember what I said before. So I feel like I'm really being, being used today to channel. I feel like I keep blacking out. I'm like, wait, Michelle, what did you just say? Like, I'm not remembering it. It's very weird. And fun fact, before I knew that I could read and do cards and stuff, I literally thought I was crazy because I would constantly do that. I would forget what I was talking about, or I would lose my train of thought and I would beat myself up for it. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? So if you guys are going through that too, if you go through like these blackout phases where you're just like, I lost my train of thought and you literally can't remember anything that you were just talking about. It might be because you're not meant to say whatever you are about to say. The universe takes words from us. There's nothing wrong with your mind. We have the otter card. This is all about having so much fun and choosing your joy. And I like that his background kind of matches like it's like a tie dye vibe, like my my um, my crop sweatshirt. So otter is all about, you know what, I'm going to read it. The otter card is my spirit animal for next month. And I'm super pumped. I'm going on a road trip with an old friend who I I haven't seen him in like three years in person. Um, And he's coming back and we're going to go on a road trip together. And I'm so pumped. All right. So the otter, it says unobstructed joy, playfulness, contentment. Perhaps the most joyful creature within the animal spirit deck, the otter represents absolute bliss. Man, you got two cards with bliss. Other, or sorry, otter energy is the playfulness of a child available to us at any age. They have a giddiness and a reverence for life itself without the presence of doubt, worry, or skepticism. Imagine yourself with a little more otter energy. What would life look like? What would it take to bring you there? The otter card begs this question and wants to transport us to that precious place as soon as possible. The celebration awaits. And it says, when in balance, you're full of love and you need nothing. When you're out of balance, you're gloomy, you sigh a lot, and you make silly excuses to bring into balance a dance party or celebration. And this just brought me back to before I was fully spiritually awakened, Um, I used to have such mood swings, so I didn't really like, and I feel called to share this because I think some of you might be experiencing this, but I used to go through through these like quick little mood swings where I was just like needing attention or I I wanted somebody to, to, to listen to me or to to pay attention, but I wouldn't like ask for it. (laughs) I was so like cryptic. I would be quiet and I would avoid, and I would do all these weird things. And it's so funny. I can see that pattern in other people. And I'm just like, oh, I used to do that. Like I remember. And it really is like a, like have awareness of, I don't feel good. What would make me feel good? Let me go choose something that will lift my mood. Let me not let anybody else know, you know, or maybe not push my energy onto other people when I'm in a bad mood. How can I pull back and be aware of it? And and if I see people be like, hi, 
I'm feel shitty today. And you just like, let it be there, but you don't avoid people to get them to ask you if you're okay. Like that's, that's that ego trying to search for validation and try to, it's searching to be seen. So once you're fully awakened, you're aware all the time of what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and you're never projecting it onto other people, especially your children, because your children are not responsible for regulating your emotions. And I'm, I'm assuming you guys are like me and we grew up with parents that we had to regulate their emotions. Um, and maybe not everybody, but it was like on, it was our job to make them feel better. It was our job to not piss them off. Well, nowadays it's 2022 and we're all awake and we're all aware of this behavior. Our emotions are ours and they are not to be put on other people. So if you're having a bad day, you keep it to yourself and you figure it out and you figure out what would bring me pleasure. And if somebody is willing to hold space for you and say, hey, are you okay? I see your energy's off. Do you want to talk about it? Then you talk about it, but don't pull back and wait for somebody else to have that conversation. Express yourself and say, listen, I am not in a good space today. You might want to keep your distance from me. I love saying that. I used to say that to my coworkers all the time. I'd be like, my energy is bad today. Just don't be around me because <laughs> I could feel it. And I didn't want them to take that on. So the otter card reminded me of that. It reminded me of my days where I wasn't always in a good mood and I didn't want anyone else to feel that. But now I know when I'm in a great mood and I feel good, I also have to be mindful that other people not, might not be in that space. I'm not going to dim my happiness. I'm just going to maybe choose to not be around those people or maybe I'll be around them, but just kind of, you know, be there for them. And maybe my energy will lift them up a little bit. Um, so be mindful of your energy today. If you're not feeling so hot, you know, don't put that on other people and go and shift out and do something fun. All right, we're going to pull a universe card. And don't play games with people. I just heard somebody's playing games. Like, I don't know, you guys know what that's like back in high school when you like, where you put your energy on somebody else and you're playing games and you're manipulating. We don't do that anymore. We are super honest and real and we speak our truth and we say it how it is. Again, left side, the cards keep falling on the left side. All right, this says, in every moment, the universe is conspiring to bring me toward right-minded thinking and the energy of love. <laughs> right-minded thinking, which is funny because I was on the left side. Um, so it's wanting to bring you out of your funk. It's wanting to see that even on a bad day, you can still choose love. And when I say choose love, I know in my mind, I'm always thinking I can choose to think about this in a good way. I can say, I don't feel good right now, but you know what? Maybe in the next five minutes, I'll shift out. Maybe something will happen. I'm just not going to think those thoughts right now. And sometimes we're, we feel shitty and it's okay. You just let it be there. You don't have to go shift out and go find pleasure. Um, but it is not, it is not your business to go put your energy on other people. Keep it to yourself, regulate it, figure it out, express it and say, listen, I do not have good energy today. You might want to keep your distance. If I'm feeling better, I'll come back around. So it says in every moment, the universe is conspiring. The universe is working behind the scenes to bring you toward right-minded thinking. So it's wanting, again with this, it's wanting to jump into your brain and to help you have better thoughts. Also, if you're going through a spiritual awakening, which I'm going to do a video on that later today, if I have time, I'm going to explain my spiritual awakening. If you're going through a spiritual awakening, some signs that you might be going through it are the first one is normally there's chaos in your world. There's just like discomfort everywhere you go. You just feel like you can't get relief and you might get relief for a short period of time, but then it's back and it's temporary. It'll only last maybe like a, a couple months. And sometimes it's eight months. Sometimes it's two months. It depends on how much you dive into your awakening. So there's usually chaos. You're usually very open to being out in nature. You're wanting to be out and about. I know for me, I would always go for long drives in my Jeep. I would stop at random farms and like want to pet horses and do like weird stuff where I just wanted to be so connected to animals and nature. Um, what else happens during awakening? Um, you usually have physical symptoms. So um, chaos, nature, you usually have some sort of physical symptoms. You start to get food sensitivities, 
a lot of times you have to, you're called to like not eat um, certain foods that you used to eat before your body just screams at you. And it's like, stop putting this in my body. For me, it was all animal products, steak, chicken, turkey, eggs, um, any kind of animal products I just couldn't eat. And then um, you are also like, you're finding spiritual things to read or to watch or to listen to. And it's kind of like, why is this on my radar? Why am I, am I being called to read about like um, awakening or healing or spirituality? It's usually the universe showing you what you should be diving into. And eventually once you open up to it and you start watching and you start listening, you like almost it's you're insatiable. Like you cannot your, your craving for it is so big and so loud that you can't stop listening and reading and learning. You're just a sponge and you're just wanting to know what the, what you're doing here. You want to know what your bigger purpose is, you know, wherever you are, you're not meant to be there. So those are some signs that you might be going through an awakening. And when you're going through that, you have to find pleasure. You are being called to figure out who you are. And I like to say it as what you are, right? We are not just parents, siblings, um, lawyers, doctors, teachers. You know, we're not all of those labels. We are souls. You are a soul. Like remove the money, remove the car, remove the home, remove the job, the label, remove it all. You are a soul that jumped into that body and you came here to do something, and it has nothing to do with your family. It has nothing to do with anybody else in the world. You in your body, you have a mission here. And yes, a lot of times you will connect with one other human, one other soul who is kind of like your, your other whole and you merge together and you have a mission together. A lot of times they're called twin flames and they merge together and they're here to serve the planet in some way. And a lot of times twin flames are just here to be in love. And when they share that love, it's like, it's like magnetic and it, it elevates the planet. It literally raises that vibration and people around these couples are noticing how beautiful their energy is together and how much they light up a room and they walk around places and people are like, who are they? That's that, that's their mission. And a lot of people will actually start a business together. They'll start, you know, raising a family together. They'll do things together but your soul specifically came here for a mission. And when you're awakening, you're starting to wonder, it says, let me remember what my purpose is. You're trying to figure out like, what is my purpose? I don't know what it is. And I'm here to tell you, I've been doing this for four years now, helping people discover their purpose. Your purpose is whatever you like to do. It is basically just being yourself. So for me, I would find myself obsessed obsessed with YouTube, watching card readings and watching spiritual manifesting videos. For the last probably seven years, I was obsessed with it. And not only it, maybe in the last three years, did I physically say, all right, this is something that I spend so much time doing. Like in my free time, I was teaching back then, but on the weekends it'd be a Saturday night and I'd be watching videos about manifesting and card readings. That was my soul saying, Michelle, <laughs> this is your purpose. It's whatever you're obsessed with. So whatever you find yourself absorbing nonstop and you can't get enough of it. And it might just be for that short period of time. You know, for me, I could have thought that maybe I'll just do card readings for a couple of years and then maybe I'll switch and do something else. I still don't know what my purpose is long-term, but for right now, this feels right. And this feels good. And it makes sense because I'd been doing it all along. I'd been watching other people do it all along. So if you're looking for your purpose in life, I want you to look at your behaviors and your patterns right now. What are you obsessed with? What do you can't get enough of? And whatever you're diving into like that, that could be what your mission is. That could be what you're here to do. And I know for me, a part of my mission is sharing my loss with my daughter and, and helping people grow through that, which is what I do in my reading. So the messages that come through, I give my advice and I give um, the downloads that I get. So I, I also know that like I was at one point obsessed with self-growth, like I needed to understand my mind. I needed to understand why I had anxiety. Um, so a big piece of that now, because I was so obsessed with learning about it, because it was something I went through. Now I want to help others know that they can go through it too. So another, you know, your pain, whatever you've been through in your life might become your purpose. 
but don't rush it. Don't think you need to know what it is and it's going to be like an overnight fix and you're going to be able to go get paid doing it. It takes time. Like I had to create my own income. I remember I started doing readings and I was like, I don't know how much to charge. I don't know what I'm doing. How is this happening? And now it's just effortless and it's easy. So it was a very, very slow unfolding. So your purpose will unfold perfectly. Your soul has a plan, but if you're just starting to wake up to all of this, it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. It took me at least, you know, from my initial, from my second awakening back in 2018 until now, that's about four years. So it takes time. So don't be so hard on yourself with needing to figure out what your purpose is. Okay. I'm going to use my deck, which is so crazy that I created a deck, like thinking about me back in my spiritual awakening. I was meditating twice a day for 45 minutes, trying to figure out who I am. What did I come here to do? Why did I go through all this pain in my life? And now looking back, it's like, wow, I created my own deck. I have my own YouTube channel. So you're going to get to that space too. It just might take a little lot, a little while. All right. So we have two cards. <laughs> the seahorse which is so perfect and seahorse is all about patience it says be still bop around for a bit just wait the answer will come don't rush it the universe is moving things for you <laughs> thank you exactly what we needed to hear and then also there is there a decision you are needing to make sit in silence and ask yourself to be open to receiving the answer. It will come when you least expect it. It will be a gentle whisper from your heart. And a big part of awakening is listening. And we got that already. The Holy Spirit uh, speaks through you. The Holy Spirit's voice is as loud as your willingness to listen. So your willingness to listen is going to propel you with any decisions you need to make. So if you're having a thought that's reoccurring, like I should be doing this. I should end this, or I should start this. If it's still here after a couple of months and you're, you're still thinking about it, that's your, that's your intuition. You're waking up to this inner voice, this inner calling that wants to move you to what your soul came here to do. So that's a big piece of awakening is listening. You have to tune in to what your heart and what your body and what your soul wants you to do. So if you're sitting around wondering like, what's my purpose? I don't know what I should be doing. Well, you also have to sit back and listen to what your thoughts are saying. So big picture right now, in order for people to get into their full mission and like for me to do my readings, to do Reiki and to do YouTube, there were moments where I would be sitting on my couch on a Sunday afternoon and it would be a thought, Michelle, you should start YouTube. Just a thought, right? And I realized, oh my God, I've been having this thought for four years. And I sat there and I'm like, shit, the fear started to build. I'm like, I think I have to do it. But it was like, I didn't want to, but yet the thought was there. My soul was literally saying, this is your next step. You need to do it. And then all of a sudden, January 1st, I opened up my computer and I just posted a reading like this. I just started the YouTube. I just did it. And now look, all almost all of my reading clients, almost all of my coaching clients are all from YouTube and it expanded my income. It expanded my life. It expanded my creativity. I love creating content. So that little voice of me just sitting on the couch on that Sunday afternoon saying, Michelle, you should start YouTube. That's why we have to listen. There's so many people that are going through life wondering what their purpose is or wondering where they could be happier. And they're sitting on their couch and they're hearing a voice say something and they're totally ignoring it. Or they're thinking they can't do it and they just never want to start. But you have to listen to that voice and maybe journal it. And then maybe get support on how to start whatever it is that you want to do. Like if you're having a, I want to start a small business or I want to do this, you can sit there and say, universe, if you, this is really what I came here to do, please show me the way. Bring me somebody that can help me start the YouTube or start the business and then just take action to do it. And I know, <laughs> I know it's not easy. Like it wasn't easy for me. It might sound silly, but it was not easy for me to just open up my computer and start YouTube. It took immense courage. I had so much fear of judgment, but when I did it, I just went full blown. Like I did not, I did a video every single day, sometimes two videos a day. And I just, it just felt so good. So once I started, it was like, I was like, this feels right. 
So get excited. You're, you might be like steps away from feeling so amazing and being in your joy and being happy. And it just takes, you know, maybe leaving that job or leaving that partnership or, you know, sending that email to create something or start something new with somebody, or maybe expressing your feelings and speaking your truth with somebody. All right, let's do angels of abundance deck. And I have a coaching call at 10. So I'm going to have to cut this. Sh Not short. This is normal length, but just have to make sure I leave on time. Quiet retreat. It's time to disconnect from the outer world so that you can discern and process your true thoughts and feelings from your inner world. Create this quiet time for yourself and you'll have more clarity about what to do next. You guys, <laughs> we're getting so many messages of listening and tuning into your heart. Quiet retreat. What is that inner nudge telling you to do? And don't panic. Do not panic. It is such a gift. You have this literally, like, you have this like lighthouse inside of you that's saying, hey, follow my light, follow my lead. I will take you to where you're going to be so happy. All you have to do is listen to the voice, write down what it's saying, and then follow it. And remember, it's a whisper. Your ego is going to boss you around and say, you should do this and da, 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 and you can't do this. And any kind of fearful thought is your ego, a little whisper that's saying like, Hey, this makes you feel good. You know, go see him, go see her, go do that. Go take a drive, go for a workout, start tuning in and taking action on those small thoughts. That is the entire point of the spiritual awakening is to listen and take action when your intuition is talking to you. That's when your life becomes effortless and fun. When it becomes difficult is when you're not listening to that voice and it just, you, you're taking the dark path. You're not taking the well-lit path. It's gonna be hard to navigate a dark path. You can still go down it. It's just gonna cause more discomfort in your body. Okay, let's do a couple more animal cards and then we'll actually, we already did this deck. Let's do Spirit Animal Oracle. Two cards, please, universe. Would love to end with two cards. Thank you. We're going to take the top two. Armadillo, we got this the other day. Set healthy boundaries. Yep. And then the Starfish card, open to infinite possibilities. Anything is possible. Anything you think about, you can create. So I did a video the other day about um, the revision technique and using your mind to recreate a better future for yourself and maybe reliving, like there might be situations from your past that you weren't happy with. Well, you can kind of recreate them in your future. You can create a better outcome for yourself and setting healthy boundaries. I think that's with your body. Your body is calling you to make change. I did this really cool foot cleanse last night where you take these foot pads and you tape them to the bottom of your feet. And it has, um, uh, there's all these herbs and um, I think it was charcoal, vinegar. Uh, there's something else, bamboo. There's, I forget the combination, but it pulls, it's like a foot bath um, or kind of like a sauna it pulls the toxins out of your feet while you sleep. So you keep this pad on both of your feet. I put socks on over top. My two foot pads were black. It was disgusting. There's so much on it. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I did this. I felt so good. Um, so setting healthy boundaries is making decisions to help your body heal, to set yourself up. Because if you're constantly making decisions, that are making you feel like you're not taking care of your body. Now you're going to have anxiety that something's going to go wrong with your body because you keep making choices that are not healthy. So deep down, you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So that's why the anxiety is there. But once you start changing your diet, um, cutting back on some things or taking action to cleanse or only putting healthy things in, then your anxiety goes away. Cause you're like, okay, like I'm actually doing something to make myself healthier. So I'm not going to be in my fear because I know that I'm doing the right thing. So I see that as setting healthy boundaries. All right, lovies. I hope you enjoyed this morning read. Remember 
tune in, listen to what your inner voice is telling you. If you're not feeling good, don't push your energy onto other people, figure out what you can do to bring yourself pleasure today. Whether it's listening to something, going for a walk, eating something really yummy, don't push your moods onto other people. Take care of your own energy and know that whatever you're going through, if it's chaos, if it's a spiritual awakening, it is not easy. I'm going to tell you that right now. What you're going through is hard. So be kind to yourself. Take that quiet retreat and rest and sleep and keep absorbing all spiritual information so you can understand what it is that you're going through. YouTube saved my life during my, my awakening. It would be 11 o'clock at night and I'd be watching videos on why I was experiencing weird dreams or why I was experiencing like just feeling so disconnected from everybody in my life. I felt like nobody understood what I was going through. So if you're feeling like that, please reach out to me. I would love to sit down and do a session with you to help guide you through that process because it is, it, it is not easy. All right, lovies, I will see you in the next reading or the next manifesting video. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and I will see you soon.